let's do a couple of demos to show exactly what query store is and how it works. Uh, just for reference, this is uh, a local SQL Server 2022 instance, developer edition, and this is Management Studio 21. This isn't production, and this version of Management Studio is still technically in preview. However, it's good for demos. And I like the, um, the way that it stores uh, tabs down the side, which you'll see in a second. Uh, where do we want to go with documents? Uh, what about Here we go. Fantastic. Okay, let's go find those. Yep, definitely there. Okay, I'll open the file. I must have clicked on folder. There we go. Right. Let's go and look at uh, Query Store. So just to briefly show you, and I mentioned it's a database level setting. So this is my server. If you go into your databases, you'll find a database and query store will be there if it's enabled. If you have a database where query store is not enabled, <laughs> I enable it everywhere. I'll turn it off to show you. Uh, query store, if you turn it off, then, uh, you will not have query. Oh, you do have query store here in 2022. That's interesting. It's because I've had it on, um, but you need to enable it to enable this tab in the query store here. Now let's just go through a few settings on when you enable query store, it has its own tab in options here. So you have three modes here. Uh, you have off, you have read only, and you have read write. Off means inaccessible, not capturing data. Uh, read only means uh, don't capture fresh data, but be available so that we can query the data that's already in the query store. Uh, read write is normal. I'm capturing and you can read data from me. It's worth noting sometimes, even if you want to be in read write, your actual operation mode may be different, but there could be a few reasons for that. One of them may be that the query store is full and it will put itself to read only because it can't capture any more data. All right, let's go through a few more of the options. So data flush interval, this is how often uh, query store sends data to disk and hardens it to the MDF. I've set it as one minute for this demo. Would you usually have that around 15 minutes? I think it is by default, but it's just how often it saves to the disk. This statistics collection interval here We'll have a look at some reports in a second, but query store will aggregate data over a certain time period. So it's at the default is one hour, I believe. So we'll aggregate the average queries. It'll count how many queries run in that hour. Show you things like averages, max, min. So this is very much dependent on what you prefer. Again, for this demo, I'm setting it to one minute so that we've got, uh, we can capture the data. Query store retention here. So how many plans you can capture per query maximum. A thing that isn't unusual for us to see is when we're doing a health check is a query could have tens of thousands of associated query plans. You don't want all those captured in query store. It's unnecessary. It's going to put an unnecessary load on your server. So you can limit it to capturing 200 is the default. You can capture it, to set it to whatever. If it needs to be higher, if it needs to be lower, tell it to your, your flavor. The maximum size of the query store. Now this is an interesting setting. So by default, it stores one gigs worth of data. And again, this is within your main data file in your database. Uh, you can see on my demo system here, it's currently using two meg of the 998 meg available to it. It will only use what it needs. As it grows, it will um, take up that much space in your main data file. Uh, if it needs to grow, it'll have to grow. Uh, that's just normal. And like I mentioned, if you've got a particularly large system, particularly busy system, you may hit the one gig limit. I think my record is hitting that limit in about four hours on, on one particularly busy client site. Uh, so you may need to adjust this maximum size. Another thing you can do to help the, the storage is you've got a few settings here. So query store capture mode. 
there's three options here. You can set it to none. So it's just not capturing data, query data. You can set it to auto. Now, what this does is it's query store decides which queries are important based upon how much, how many resources they're using. We've seen that if we've got uh, queries that run small and often, they can be ignored in this capture mode. And if you're in a death by a thousand cuts situation, it might not pick them up. That's what auto does. All is literally everything. Bear in mind, that's going to put a load on your system. If you're capturing all queries, it's going to have more of an overhead than if you're just capturing what's query store decides are important. And you can set custom as well, but that's a setting I've never had to use. Um, so we, we won't have to go into it in depth in this presentation. Okay, size-based cleanup mode. Uh, this is similar. You've got off or auto. It's saying when I when data reaches maximum size, do you want it to allow it to self to self purge data? So you probably have that to auto as standard. Um, stale query threshold. So the the statistics that I mentioned where we capture the data, how long do we want to keep that data around for? Set to thirty days. If you've got extreme pressure on your, your storage, maybe take that down to seven or two or whatever works in your environment. Wait steps capture mode here. So do you want to capture the wait statistics of queries? Do you want to know if they're block victims or what, what have you? Uh, it's a simple off on capture. And again, if you're, th these are the sorts of things you'd only change if you're finding you've got quite a lot of overhead. So those are the default settings. And as uh, in any SQL server, you can click script here and it will create a script of your changes. So this one, these are the changes I've just made to that. And you can see here, this is, this is how you would enable query store by a T-SQL because you don't want to go into the GUI every time. So it's just turning query store on and that will just set it default parameters. And then if you want to modify you can change whatever parameters you need from here. Uh, so we, we try not to use the GUI because it's just, it doesn't scale. Right. Let's do a couple of demos on how a query still captures. Now, what I'm going to do, this uh, database we're going to look at is an SSG internal database. We run some automation on here. It's just a background process, but it's got query still running. So it's a good, good way to show you how it's working. So this is an Azure SQL DB server. It's called Automation. It has query still running. So we'll show you some of the things we have in here. One of the first things you'd usually go here is top resource consuming queries. So you can see here, we're looking at top resource consumers by duration, total over the last hour. So I'm going to go to configuration, change that to look at the last week worth of data. Okay, so these columns here are different queries. Now, this highlighted query here, you can see the T-SQL from down here. It's just selecting an alert ID from one of our tables. And over here, you can see the dates. And these are so if we hover over aggregations one of, these, of our execution plans here. You can see this is for the period of the 17th to the 18th of April. So it's a 24-hour period. During that time, we had a query executed, this query was executed 66,000 times with an average duration of 1.3 milliseconds. And you can see if we go to a later one here, this is the 22nd to the 23rd of April, uh, 77,000 execution, an average duration of 1.97 milliseconds. So this is, this is what I mean when we're talking about the aggregation periods. So we can change by Queries by total execution count, total CPU, or CPU, and then 
You could change the aggregation from average to total, things like that. To use an example of a query with multiple plans, uh, we've got one here. So this query here, uh, we can see this is the T-SQL. This is a query plan. Uh, for this query ID, we have two query plans here. We have 880681 and 880615. So if you click on them, you can see that they'll be, diff they'll be slightly different. Uh, I'll be further down. Uh, and you can see the, the average duration of this query is uh, 6.4 6 seconds. Uh, and this one here is averaging 4.6 seconds. So if we wanted to force this plan ID here, we literally highlight it and click on force plan here. It says, do you want to force the plan? And we go, yes. And then it will give us a tick box in that execution plan at the, um, yeah, the execution plan, the query plan. And then we know that's forced. Uh, so. If you, uh, if you need to force a plan, that's how you do it. If you want to view what's, what's, uh, forced, uh, you click on this report here using the GUI. Uh, we can see we've got two query IDs here with forced plans. This one's actually a much better example. Uh, so you can see this query has got a number of query plans. Um, if you click on them, you can view the separate plans. If I give it a chance to load. Uh, and we can see here, we've got a forced query plan, which is this gray one here. It's forced. If I wanted to unforce it, simply click this button. And in fact, I will unforce this query before I forget. So we can unforce this plan. Do you want to unforce? Yes. Done. Um, one of the other great features in query story in the, in the canned reports here is the regressed queries. Uh, what this will do, it will show you queries that have gotten slower during your time period. Uh, so I'll extend this out. Oh, this is a week. Uh, so you can see this query that we saw earlier has gotten slower on average. Uh, it's almost doubled in duration from 1.03 milliseconds to 1.97 milliseconds. So that's not an issue. This is a related query. Uh, yep, yeah, you can see a query here. Go away. Now, what's interesting to see is this little triangle symbol means that this query uh, failed. If you see a circle, it succeeded. If you see a square, it was cancelled by the user or the application. And a triangle, it failed. So we can see on here that this query has been consistently failing. Um, I know from experience that it's the nature of this query. It's designed to fail if it's got nothing to do. Uh, this query here, you can see the total duration has uh, regressed over the past week. So if we're having performance issues, we could come here and have a look. Um, now, the, the canned queries are, are great, but they're not perfect. Uh, so there are uh, a number of system, uh, a number of community tools that are used to read the DMVs because query stores, stores everything in DMVs just like we do. Um, so the, my favorite one for query store is SP quickie store. So this is by Eric Darling. Um, you could just Google SP quickie store and it's all on this GitHub. Um, basically what we do here is we can execute this. It's already installed on the instance and it will go and act, go and interrogate query stores and it will give us our top queries. It defaults to CPU consumers, I believe, or it might be duration looking at this. Um, but it will give you your top queries based upon duration. Um, there's a bunch of different parameters. You can do things like uh, include a particular query plan. You, there's one here to search for query text. So if you know the query, but you don't know its query ID, or you know a bit of the T-SQL, you can put it in here and it will find it in query store for you if it's available. Um, it's extremely powerful. If you're starting to use query store, I very much recommend uh, digging into SP Quickie Store. And there it's got, on his website, he's got a bunch of videos on how to use this. And, and yeah, it's a great, it's a great tool for Query Store. <laughs>